Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a new game that I was never able to beat as a child. Let's go ahead and uh, hit escape since I am not. W I do not wish to use the joystick. Oh my God! It's a Sierra game. Well, guys, I guess uh, I hope you're ready to die lots of times. Someone who is unnamed and Sierra are proud to present. The life and times of a great American hero. And you know he's a true American because the word American is like the American flag. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> His name is Jared Wilson. A young, ambitious city slicker born and raised in urban America. Quite frankly, he's perfectly prim and proper. Caught in the trap of nine to five. Is this all that life has to offer? There has to be more. This man is ready for action. As of this moment, no longer will he accept only dreaming of adventure. Oh yeah. He'll bring firewood. Try to start a fire. Ignore the flaming arrow from the Indians that hits the... carriage behind him. The wagon behind him. Whatever. And idly walk off the screen when it's burning. And suddenly appear on a bro on a boat. Yes, yes, you're a sailor now, Jared. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh, Jared. Careful there. Ah, oh, you've fallen to your death. But look, you've suddenly landed in the jungle, and now you're in a city. He has amazing transportational powers. He can teleport from one scene to another, and promptly smash his face into a. Light pole. Gold Rush! Yeah, I was never able to beat this game as a kid. And considering that the RNG in this game is evil, there are so many things that can kill you just completely randomly. It is awesome. You thought other Sierra games were bad? Oh, ho, ho, ho. you haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, you get on that bridge, Jared. I said get on that bridge. Yeah. Brooklyn Heights, New York, 1848, before the gold rush. Alright, well, the first thing to point out is that we have 250 points total uh, available to us in this game. There's actually three paths that you can take to uh, get to where you want to go, which is California. And you have an elapsed time option here. Two minutes, 12 seconds. How is two minutes already passed? Did it really count time spent looking at the... Uh, um, uh, watching the intro? That's horrible. Anyway, there is a, um, if you don't want the time to, uh, uh, pass too fast, because there's certain things that have to happen, you can actually change the speed to fastest. Yeah, let's actually go ahead and hit elapsed time. Two minutes, 18 seconds. Oh, look. It's not incrementing time. It's a bug in the game, everyone! Ha ha ha! And you know I will be taking advantage of it. But, for now, we don't need to. Um, let's put it on normal speed. Look! You try to open the gate, but discover it is locked. <gasps> How dare they! Yes! I wonder if I can use my... Nope. Well, I bet this is locked, too. Sweet. I don't think I can use my numerical keypad. Oh yeah, I can. Sweet. This is the only bedroom in the house. The only thing in the bedroom is a bed. As a child, you and Jake slept in the attic. Wow, that's that's kind of harsh there. Well, let's uh, look. Table. This table was handcrafted by your grandpa. Resting on the table is an old family album and a lamp. Can we take the lamp? You have no need for this lamp. Well, boo. Look, album. 
Memories, memories, memories. Every time you look at this album, it brings back memories. The album begins with a painting of your father and his best man, Mr. Quayle, the bank president, shaking hands after the wedding. You can't help but remember the help Mr. Quayle was during the years after your parents' death. He raised you and your brother, Jake, until you could live on your own. Here is a painting of your older brother, Jake, when he was just a baby. You often think of Jake, wondering where he is and what he is doing. And just across the page is a painting of you. You must, be, must have been about 18 months old. And finally, you see a photo of your entire family together. You remember excitement of posing together in front of the camera and standing there for hours and hours and hours. It is a very, very special photo to you. Well, can we take the photo? You carefully remove the family photo from the album. Sweet. I'm actually going to go ahead and put it up on faster speed now. Let's uh, see what our time is. 3 minutes, 21 seconds. Yeah, I kind of want to... You are in a closet. In years past, this closet was bulging with all kinds of useful things. Now it is a place used to store things you don't need. Well, you'd better get out of the closet there, Jared. Oh. I didn't know you could walk through there! Well, you know what this means? Let's save. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. Do 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 do. Come on. Ah. You say to Mr. Quill, sometimes I think something terrible may have happened to Jake. I wish I knew how he was doing. Mr. Quill replies. I have this feeling he's fine, and someday you will be reunited. Don't give up hope. No, no, of course. Everything will be fine. Oh, come on. Sierra game. Why are you not killing me? Come on, where is the, uh... There we go. No. Ah, there we go. It would beho behoove you to move yourself out of the way of these wagons. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Our first death. Let's go ahead and restore the game. Alright, somehow I suspect that uh, F7 is used by something else. Okay. Let's not get ourselves killed just yet. Uh, actually, there's nothing that I really want to do here. So, uh, let's go this way. And you can go really fast. Whee! Whoop. Let's, uh... Look, sign. The sign says, keep off the grass. Oh, all right. This is the downtown Brooklyn Park. The gazebo and the fla and flowers catch your eye of those that walk by. Can we get some flowers? You pick a few flowers. Sweet. You remember playing around the gazebo as a child? You would lose your candy through the wide cracks in the gazebo floor. Look, floor. The floor is made of wooden planks with wide cracks between them. Look, cracks? You see the sparkle of something shiny. Ah, yes! A closer look reveals a gold coin under the gazebo. Take coin. You stretch your arm as fast as you, as far as humanly possible. The gold coin is almost beyond your reach, but finally you are able to grasp it. Woohoo! I got points! Yeah! Come on, Jared. You can get out of there. Thank you. Oh, look, I have an email. Oh, no one is close enough. Well, let's go to the post office.
Ring bell. Ding ding. What can I do for you? You have any mail for me? Let me check. I'll be right back. Postmaster says, You've been checking your mailbox every day for the last 11 years, hoping to hear from Jake. I'm real sorry, Jared. There's still no word. I know how close the two of you were. You reply with a sigh. Thanks for checking. I hope to hear from Jake someday. You never will, Jared. You never will. This is a Sierra game, after all. Ah, yes. 3 minutes, 23 seconds is still, uh... Still the current time. Actually, let's uh, let's go to the uh, cemetery. Something about our parents dying, right? I'm sure we can do something here. These two uh, graves up here look kind of suspicious. Suspicious graves. You are near your parents' graves. In loving memory of Martha Wilson, 1839, age 31, may she rest in peace. Survived by her sons Jake and Jared. In respect for our father, Marshall Wilson, taken away 1839, age 33, a man whose steps are worthy to walk in. This great name to be on, to name to be carried on by Jake and Jared. Aw, well, let's leave some flowers. When you visit your parents' graves, you bring a bouquet of flowers in their memory. It was a dark, damp, dreary, cold, rainy, windy winter night many years ago that your mother and father were suddenly taken in an unfortunate horse-drawn buggy accident. <gasps> Not a buggy accident! How quickly and tragically they were taken. You never have, and most likely never will, understand... Unders no. You never have, and most likely never will, understood why. I think there's a grammar error in there. But it's 6 a.m. I'm too tired to figure it out. Well, I'm not too tired. I'm just... Whatever. Actually, let's go this way. Whee! What a view! The view of New York City is breathtaking. New York City! Look, Harbor. From here, you have an excellent view of the East River. Alright, let's hit F8. Whee! Alright, bad idea to go that fast. Come on, Jared, let's head back to town. Ah, oh, office. With a sweet voice, Lois says, It is so nice to see you again, Jared. Don't be such a stranger. You don't work... You work so much, I worry about you. The man says, Things have been humdrum around here lately. I haven't had much to do. You say anything else? Nope. The boss says, you're a very ambitious young man, Jared. You're going to go places in this company. Well, that's nice. I'm glad I'll be going to places in this company. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What do you have to say? The man says, Good day, Mr. Wilson. Are you ready for today's economy update? You reply, I'm ready to go ahead. The Brooklyn economy is strong. Property is holding its value. If nothing out of the ordinary happens, this will continue. However, there have been rumors of the discovery of gold in California. If there is any truth to these rumors, it could have a profound effect on the local economy. Sweet! Gold in California? And this game is called Gold Rush. I am going there. But first, I need to go, uh... Quit my job. No, not not go in there. Uh, actually, let me see if I uh, want to do anything before I do that. Nah, I think I'm good. Oh, actually, let's uh, look at my desk first. Probably a good idea, right? To read to check my desk before I quit. Uh, 
It is a plain desk with a blotter on it. Well, let's, uh, look. Blotter. Around the edge of your blotter, you see a corner of the newspaper clippings you keep under it. Look. Clippings. These clippings are very important to you. You find yourself reading them often, wondering where your brother is and what he is doing. These clippings describe the complicated episode of your only brother, Jake. Jake was falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit. Although Jake was promised a fair trial, the townspeople weren't interested in justice. The result would have been a foregone conclusion. Jake's only alternative was to leave town and never come back. Luckily, there are no extradition treaties between states at this time. Apparently, I guess, I don't know. Seems odd that there wouldn't be, but whatever. Then again, you have to catch them and send them to the other states, so yeah. When he left Brooklyn, you wanted to go with him. Jake told you to stay because it may be dangerous. And he didn't have a wooden sword to give you. But he did promise that he would contact you if something important happened. He left 11 years ago, and you haven't heard from him since. Clearly nothing important has happened to him. Can I take the clippings? You don't need the clippings. You read them so often, you know, you know them word for word. But what if I want them? I wonder if I can look coin. Ah, I can. It's a mint condition, uncirculated, 1848 solid gold coin. Ooh. Can I look photo? This photo brings back many family memories. Look cash. You have a fistful of cold cash. Uh, what else do I have? Key. This is the key to your residence, 10 Front Street. Oh, well, I guess I would tell you how to know, how I'd know, that, uh, that would be how I'd know to go to the, uh, house that I went to already. Ha ha ha! Rather than, you know, actually remembering it. Well, uh, you know what? Screw you, I quit! You can't fire me! Your boss is shocked by your decision. He says, But Jared, you're one of the best. He continues, But a man has to do what a man has to do. Well, I wish you were you the very best, Jared. We'll miss you around here. Sweet, I got points for telling my boss off. Ah. Aw, oh, she doesn't say anything different. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and end the episode here. We'll pick it up in the next episode as we continue around Brooklyn looking for stuff to do. Because it's not like we're going to go to California or anything. <laughs> See you next time.